Okay, I'm just going to give you a very, very brief tutorial on how to use KiCad in order to uh, just sketch up schematics so you can put nicely drawn schematics into your electronic notebooks, lab notebooks. Um, now, KiCad is actually a collection of a bunch of different programs that it integrates together to allow you to design circuits and turn those designs then into printed circuit boards. But we're not going to go that far in this class. We're just going to use it as a way to sketch our circuits and so that we can put them in our lab notebooks. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make a project. All right, so I'm gonna come over to File, New, Project. And then I go to whatever directory I want and I do the name of my project. I'm gonna call this Example, Inverting Amplifier, just there it is. Okay, so now it's made my project, and if I pull this bar over, you can see here's my project, and it's made a printed circuit board file and a schematic file. Those are there, you don't have to worry about them. But to actually start drawing our schematic, then we want to click on this button right here, the Schematic Layout Editor. This opens the program called EE Schema. And that's what we use to lay out our circuits, okay? So in this example, I am going to make an inverting amplifier, all right? And so the first thing we need to do is to figure out how to put down components. And if you come over here on the menu, there's a menu item uh, labeled place, and that allows you to place different things on the schematic. So I'm going to place a symbol. So I click on that. Now I am in symbol placement mode. So when I come and I click, on the screen, it's going to pull up a thing where I can look for the part that I want to uh, place. And ones that you've used recently show up at the top, um, but you can also search for things. So for this example, I'm going to use an LM358 op amp. All right, so I'm going to search for LM358. And there it is, LM358. And I open this up. And there's three different symbols for this op amp. Why is that? Well, the chip, remember, this is designed for making circuit boards. And so it's keeping track of the fact that the LM358 chip actually has two op amps on it. So if I do unit A, it gives me the op amp where the inputs are pins two and three and the output is one. If I click on B, it's going to give me the op amp, the other op amp on the other side of the chip using pins five, six, and seven. And then there's the power, right, on pins four and eight of the chip. Okay, so I'm going to assume that I, um, I'm just going to use uh, this one side of the chip to make my amplifier. Now, what if you can't find the part that you want? There are ways to create new parts um, in KiCad and EE Schema. But as far as just jotting things down, you know, making a schematic you can put in your lab notebook, you can just find a part that has a similar pinout, right? And, and just use that instead, all right? But it turns out it has the part I want. So I'm gonna double click on unit A, and then I'm just gonna let me put it down. Now that looks kind of small, so I want to zoom in. And you can zoom with the, these buttons here, or you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse, all right? And then let's come over, let's scroll in a little more and center this up. Okay, so there's my op amp, all right? Now, notice there's several things. There's the pins, and then there's the label that says what kind of a device this is, all right? And then there's another label that says, which one is it? Which part is this? If I make a complicated schematic, I may have a whole bunch of different op amps, and I need to label them. So if you come over and hover over the label and right click, it says you can edit the reference. So I'm gonna say this is op amp, inverting amp. I'm gonna call it inv amp, u in amp. So u means that's the part I'm dealing with and then it's inverting amplifier. And that a there means it's the amplifier a on that chip. So if I were gonna make a circuit board and I'm using both sides of the amplifier, I would insert a B amplifier, give it the same name, and then a, the, the program would know, oh, that's just the other side of the same chip, okay? So now I'm gonna make my inverting amplifier. To make my inverting amplifier, next I need to add resistors. Now, I already put myself into 
symbol mode. So now I'll just have to click on the board again and it'll bring up a choose symbol. Now I want a resistor. So let's search for a resistor. Oh my goodness, there's lots of resistors. All right. So you can scroll through them and find the one that you want. R is just a plain old resistor. Okay. But I kind of like the squiggly line rather than the box, kind of the old school resistor. And so I'm going to use R underscore US. And that's my resistor. So double click on that. Now I've got a resistor. I can put it there. All right. Now, so I'm going to make my inverting amplifier. And so for an inverting amplifier, I have a resistor that comes into the inverting input and then a resistor from there to the output. And then I connect the plus to ground. But usually if you look in a textbook, when it draws an inverting amplifier, it has the inverting input on top. So I'm going to conform with that. I'm going to come over onto the symbol. I'm just going to put my cursor over the op amp and right click. When I right click, I get all these different things I can change. And there's one called orientation. And under orientation, I'm going to mirror around the horizontal axis. There, we flipped it. OK, so now I need to take my resistor and hook it up to the input. But I don't like the resistor this way. I want to rotate it. So I can right click on it and go over to orientation, and I can rotate. Another way I can do that quickly is I just hover over it, and I hit the R key on my keyboard, and I can rotate it. So there it is. Now I want to move it over here and put it in position. To move, you can kind of just drag on it and then let go, and then your part will start to move. So you see I come over, I click on the part, I drag, and then I let go, and it lets me move the part. So let's put it right there. OK. And then I want to put my other resistor right here. I really don't like these labels in the way. And so I'm going to move them. I'm going to right click on this, and it says Move Value. So I'll move it down here. There we go. Come up here, right click on the reference, move reference. Let me put the reference right there. Now they're not blocking where I want to put my resistor. OK? Now, if you're just like making a really simple schematic and you don't want to worry about a label, you can right click on the reference and click Edit Reference. And I can uncheck Visible. Then that reference isn't there. I don't need a name for it. There's only one op amp, right? And if I don't care about what type of op amp it is, I can right click, um, edit value, and uncheck visible there. But it's usually a good idea to remember what type of op amp you used because that can affect your circuit. But since I don't have the reference, I'm going to tuck this in now a little bit closer. OK, so I've got my resistor. I need another resistor. So let's click right here and get another resistor and put it right here. And I'm going to rotate that orientation, rotate. And notice when you look in the menus, it shows you the hotkeys. I showed you how you can use, you press R to rotate it. It tells you that right there. All right, so it tells you what the hotkeys are. Okay, whoops, I didn't want to add another thing. That was a mistake and click. Okay, actually I do. So we know for an inverting op amp, we want to connect the non-inverting input to ground, but it turns out it's a good idea to connect it through a resistor. Um, which is the parallel sum of these two resistors. And what that does is it tends to, if there's a little bias current flowing through your resistor inputs, it helps to null that out. So that's a common technique people use. So I'll add one more resistor. I'll click here, one more RUS, and I'll put it right here. OK, there we go. Now, um, I need to wire everything up, right? And so I'm going to come over to place. Instead of doing a symbol, I want to make a wire now. So I'm going to take a wire and a click go there to there. Now I've got a wire. I'm going to make a wire go from there to there. I'm going to make a wire go from there to there. So I just click on the start and I click on the end. And then I have my wire coming in. There's my input. You only have to click once to connect to something that's already there. But if you're just letting it hang in air, you have to double click. All right, so now I've got my stuff coming in and my stuff coming out. How do I label this as input and output? Oh, and I need a wire, whoops, from here to the output. OK, so there I've got my resistors wired up. How do I mark this as the input and that as the output? Well, now we're going to come and we're going to place a, a global label. 
okay? So I click on that, and I come here and I click, and it asks me what I want my label to be. After I click, I'm gonna say VN. All right, okay, and there's my label, and I'm just gonna bring it here and stick it on that wire right there. I'm gonna click again to make another label, and I'm gonna call it V out. Click, okay, and there it is. It's facing the wrong direction, so I'm just going to click, put it somewhere on the table there, then rotate it twice. Notice after I rotate it once, if I hit R again, nothing happens because it's moved out from under my cursor. I have to move my cursor over it again. Okay, then I drag it, click and drag, and then I move it over there. There's V out. Okay, what are we missing? Oh, we need to ground the non-inverting input. And so I'm going to come over to place, and I need a power port. So I click on power port, click on the schematic, and here are different ones I can do. I want ground. So you can search for, you know, ground. And, oh, here's all these different grounds. There's that ground. There's earth ground. Let's use this ground right here. Okay, so click on that, bring it over. I'll just click on the end of my resistor. Now I've got that ground there. So there's my inverting amplifier. Oh, but wait a minute, it doesn't have any power. So how do I add power? Well, I'm gonna go back to place symbols and I click on here and I go to my LM358 again. And remember there were three units. There's the op amp on the bottom, the op amp on the top, and then there's power. And so I'm gonna place the power. So I'll double click on that and here's my power. All right, and I'm gonna come over here and I can, you know, maybe label these both the same so you know that this is the power for that chip. But a better way to do that is I'll click and drag so I can move it is I'll just actually bring it over here and actually put it on my chip. And then it's very obvious that this is power for that chip, All right? But I've already labeled the chip and everything, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to, oh, so I right click here, but I have the power symbol plus the op amp symbol kind of on top of each other. So when I right click, a EE schema doesn't know which one I want. And so I have to tell it which one I want. Move value, that's not what I wanted to do actually. What I want to do is I want to turn these labels off. So click to select which one, edit value, I'm going to turn the value off. Boom. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Right click here. And then I'm going to say edit reference. And I'm going to make it invisible. So there we go. So now we've got our power. I turned the labels off because we've already got a label for the whole op amp, right? And now I've got power. And now I need to hook the power up. So I'm going to go to place, power port. And I need to pick power. Well, let's say I want to hook it up to you know, a 15 volt supply. So plus one five V. Oh, cool, there's one right there for plus 15 volts. So there's plus 15 volts, cool. And then if I click again, I can maybe look for one that's minus 15 volts. All right, there it is. Boom, and now I just want to hook these up. Now look, there's not room for me to stick this power right here, so I'm gonna to have to click on this resistor, whoops, click and drag and move it up to make room for the power. And then, ah, man, my wires are kind of in a goofy place now. So I wanna delete the wires. Here's how you delete something. You hover over the object and hit delete, and it goes away. All right, I'm gonna hover over here, hit delete. Let's just delete this too. Delete this. And now I can go and say place wire. I'm gonna redo my wires to that resistor, boom. There we go. Now there's plenty of room for my power port. So I'm going to click and drag and then let go and of the button and then it'll let me move it. And here I put plus 15 on the plus input. This one right here, I want to rotate it before I move it. So let's rotate it twice, then click and drag, let go of the button. And now I can move it here, click a button to attach it. Okay, so now I've got everything laid out. There's my inverting amplifier. But um, I would really like to like change these labels on my resistors. I don't really need the um, label here, the marker. 
the reference. So I'm going to edit reference and make it invisible. Okay. And then it's got like a value right here, edit value. I'm going to give it a value, right? Instead of RUS, I'm going to actually say what the size of the resistance is. So let's make this a 1K resistor, okay? And then I come up here. Again, I'm going to get rid of the reference. So edit reference and turn off visible. The reference would be really important if I were going to make a printed circuit board, right? I need to reference that resistor so I know what resistor in my schematic corresponds to one on the circuit board. But we're just making a schematic to put in our lab notebook. So we don't need that. And then I'm going to right click on the value, edit value, and let's make this a 10K. And that'll give us a gain of negative 10 for our inverting amplifier. And then I've got this resistor down here. And we said that this resistor should be ideally like the parallel uh, sum of these two resistors here. Um, but, you know, you're usually limited in what resistors you have in your kit. And if I add a 1K and a 10K in parallel, what I get is something a little bit lower than 1K. So let's just make this a 1K resistor just for simplicity. So I'm going to turn off the reference, and then I'm going to go to the value, and I'm going to change it to 1K. Okay? And then, just to make things simple, easier to read, I'm going to right-click on this. I'm going to move the value over to the other side where it's easier to read. And so there it is. There is an inverting amplifier done, an EE schema, which we started from KiCad, or KeyCAD. Got to say it right. Um, and now, there are different ways you can print this out. But for this class, just kind of zoom in on the screen. Get it, you know, the way you like it. I wish it would zoom on the center better. Get a nice, okay, that's that's good. All right. And then I'm just going to hit print screen and make a copy of the screen. Open your favorite image editing software. Um, for simple stuff, I love IR Fan View. if you've ever used that. It's just really lightweight. For more complicated stuff, I'll use GIMP. But... Just for simple stuff, I'll open IR Fan View, whatever you know, image software you want, and then I'm going to paste the screenshot in, and then I'm going to crop out everything and just you know keep my schematic. All right, change the boundaries a little bit, and then I'll come over here, edit, crop, and then I can save it and put it into my lab notebook. So there you go, just a really quick introduction to uh, KeyCAD's EE Schema Schematic Editor.